Hello, my name is Janet Kawamura, and I am currently a student at Boise State University in the MET program. I would like to share with you some of the artifacts that I have created and explain how they fit each of the AECT standards. The first AECT standard is content knowledge. For this standard, candidates demonstrate the knowledge necessary to create, use, assess, and manage theoretical and practical applications of education technologies and processes. The artifact that I would like to share with you and demonstrate my knowledge is a website that I created in EdTech 502. I have always loved studying history, and especially Idaho history. So when I received the assignment to create a virtual map, I wanted to create a virtual Oregon Trail field trip. This field trip is designed to take a student on a virtual field trip of the Oregon Trail Interpretive Center located in Montpelier, Idaho. And it represents years of history dating back to the days of the wild, wild west. Let's take a look at the website. Here is my basic website that I created for the Oregon California Trail Center. It has an address bar here with home, local facts, activities, the Oregon Trail Center itself, and then inside the trail. You can see that on these pages, I have added descriptions of the town where it is located in, and also some history on the actual trail from east to the west. When you go into the local facts, it tells you a little bit about the actual trail center and some other history of the area about Butch Cassidy and the Sundance Kid. In the activities section, talks more a little bit about the mock bank heist that the city puts on each year. Kind of a fun thing to do. And then you can actually link right over here to the Oregon Trail Center um, page. And if you click here, it takes you right to their um, interpretive site. So this was basically um, a first assignment in this class, but it showed how to organize and put together material in an organized way for education. A student can work through this field trip on their own or with a group. There is information about stops along the trail and also a description of what can be found in the Interpretive Museum. This artifact meets the criteria of creating, using, assessing, and managing applications of educational technologies. I would also love to take this project and expand upon it in the future to feature different lessons and built-in interactive activities and quizzes for the students. As I reflect on AECT Standard 2, Content Pedagogy, which states, candidates develop as reflective practitioners able to demonstrate effective implementation of educational technologies and processes based on contemporary content and pedagogy. Pedagogy can be defined simply as the method or way a teacher delivers the content to the class. In EdTech 533, using social media in the classroom, I was able to explore several new ideas of using social media as an educator. Using social media to create lessons and curriculum can be very rewarding. The artifact I would like to talk about and share to demonstrate my understanding of this standard is a historical documentary that I created in this course. First, we started with a storyboard, and then we designed, designed a script, and then we set it to pictures and did a voice narration. Let's take a look at some of the project. However, as I created this artifact, I could not only see the benefit for educators to use this method to teach lessons, but also how students do similar exercises on specific subjects that could be shared with the entire class so they could all learn. I feel that this would be an effective method to keep learners engaged in learning. The AECT Standard 3 Learning Environments states that candidates facilitate learning by creating, using, evaluating, and managing effective learning environments. 
The artifact I will share to demonstrate my understanding of this standard will be a website I created in EdTech 512. This website was created as a course that could be used for non-traditional learners that they could work through as a group or on their own. The website demonstrates my knowledge of creating, using, and managing an effective learning environment. Let's take a look at my site, Financial Fundamentals course. As we come to the Financial Fundamentals website, you'll see across the top we have a bar, a navigation bar, that will help us get where we want to go. First, we'll go to Get Started. This tells you a little bit about the course, some of the things that we're going to be covering, talks to them about how um, the student to how they are possible and can learn how to do these things. Next, we'll go to the actual lesson website where first it's lined up with all the lessons on one page and navigation to take us back home or to the next page. We can open up the syllabus and the syllabus is has my contact information, it has the course description, the course goals, all of the objectives, the location and the time, the academic and honesty policy, social media guidelines, etc. Then if we go back to lessons, we can go to lesson one, just show you a couple of these lessons. All the lessons I've tried to keep similar, they're all lined out with the what the lesson is about, the objective for this lesson, and then a little bit of information for the student to read. And now assignments here. This one has a build-in quiz and some of the assignments where they have to look at paycheck stubs. Then down here we can just go on to the next lesson or we can go back and go back to the main screen. But you'll see lesson two is similar. The lesson, the objectives, a little video to watch, and then the homework. Now it's their turn to write a monthly budget, tells them what they have, and then they can um, submit that assignment. Other things I've incorporated into my website are class social media links. This is so students may be able to follow up with each other or communicate. Again, this is for non-traditional students, but the groups are all usually private or have to join. We'll just go to the Facebook page that I've linked for this actual course, the Financial Fundamentals group, and members here can um, collaborate with each other or write or ask questions. It's pretty fun. There's also a Twitter if we wanted to send out information on Twitter, use YouTube to um, have students post assignments, and also Blogger to have students post assignments. Here is class members where we would be able to create up chats where people can talk back and forth to each other. So basically, that is it for my Financial Fundamentals course. I feel that this could be a great workshop style course that could be expanded upon in the future. The next artifact that I will share will demonstrate my understanding of AECT Standard 4. Professional Knowledge and Skills, where candidates design, develop, implement, and evaluate technology-rich learning environments within a supportive community of practice. Of all the projects I created and worked on throughout my MET pursuit, the artifact created in EdTech 522 Job Hunting Skills course was one that I am very excited about. I created this course with the intent to implement it in some form with the women's shelters where I have volunteered and taught an in-person class with similar material. So let's take a look at my job hunting skills course. Here on the main page, you'll find the task bar across the top. And then this just tells a little bit brief description about the course. The course of overview and objectives are listed clearly. Discover More section, which tells you a little bit more about getting started in the course, what it's going to be about, and the syllabus, and the lessons are also listed there.
The syllabus is outlined what the course is going to be teaching. And then here you have access to lessons here as well as here. So either of these links will take you here to the lessons page where again the student can refer back to the syllabus or they can open each lesson. Lesson one talks about getting started. Has a little bit of an intro for the lesson. Maybe a video. Some more information. And then your first assignment is listed below with instructions on where the student needs to post it. If we go back to lessons, let's just take a look at lesson four. In this lesson, again, it's just going to give you a brief overview, a video talking about what we're learning, and finally the assignment tells them how to, what to do, and where to post it. We have a little tasks and evaluation section. This is basically telling them um, their role and their responsibility and where they're going to be posting their lessons and the things they're going to be learning to make sure that they understand what they're covering. It also has a rubric of um, how they'll be evaluated. Class members can be listed here. So it's not available at the moment because I don't have any class members registered, but it would have all of the other class members information here because this is an online social media class. And then we also have social media links for each of the categories of main social media where um, students can go to find more information. We'll just click on one of them and we will go and we will see that we have a, um, a page here set up they where students can discuss topics and there's a little introduction from the from me and um, I can post things here make sure everyone's staying on track cool thing about using this it can be marked private so only members of the group can see what is being posted so that's important to keep um, integrity for the class if they don't want their stuff um, out on social media so that is basically um, my job hunting skills class. I'm very proud of this work um, and it's something I've taken a lot of the material from a written class um, and incorporated it so people and students can access this at any time at their own. The last AECT standard is Standard 5 Research. It requires candidates to explore evaluate, synthesize, and apply methods of inquiry to enhance learning and improve performance. In EdTech 501, I learned about the importance of the contribution of research to the past and current theory of educational communication. However, my group project in EdTech 503, titled How to Use Webroom in the Classroom, is the artifact that I would like to share. This project gave me the opportunity to learn and apply the requirements for this standard. First, we were able to research and explore the material that we would use for this report. We were able to then send out surveys to receive input, and we're also able to seek professional reviews of our final project and make recommended corrections to our final assignment before we turned it in. Here we can take a look at my final project that I'm talking about, Web Room in the Classroom. This was a group project. We were able to um, select our goals, do the analysis of the project, send out some surveys, which was quite fun. We got to um, get the surveys back and then do some graphs with the results. Analyze what the um, actual sur those surveyed thought we should include in this. Then we were able to put together the whole project. We were able to send it to a professional um, to get a, um, a professional review. And then we were able to come back and make some changes and um, finalize this project. So it was a very complex project. It was a great um, to work, have a partner to work on it with. And um, I thought it turned out great. So it was called Web Room in the Classroom. Being able to follow the steps outlined in the AECT Standard 5 on one complete assignment really helped me understand the process of following each of these valuable steps. In closing, I would like to express that the AECT standards were emphasized in all of my courses. I had many artifacts that would fit into several of the standards. 
I am grateful for the material I learned and look forward to being able to seek opportunities to apply my knowledge. Thank you very much for your time.